Just finished uh, practice number eight. Um, we had a great scrimmage indoors um, because of the snow last uh, Saturday. and uh, Really had a nice scrimmage. Defense ended up winning the scrimmage. I don't know if you guys heard that or not. Um, but uh, defense won the scrimmage. Did some great things offensively and defensively. Um, I just I guess after the first scrimmage, offense is just a little bit behind the defense. Um, but uh, again, like I said, great things both ways. Actually went two minutes at the end of the game to win it, and defense stopped the offense. So that's kind of how it ended. Um, I think that's all I got. As you guys move into week three now, or are there any sort of uh, position changes or at least alterations that you're kind of considering? Or? Not really. I mean, it's pretty, pretty stable. I mean, the great thing is there's not a lot of movement around. Uh, you know, Herndon's, you know, played a little defense early, but he's been focusing on offense and doing a great job. Um, but really, at this point, there's not a lot of movement around. There's a lot of, you know, from first to second, there's movement up and down the depth chart, but no position changes that I can think of. Um, Offhand, I mean, Deslin Alexandria's playing a little bit inside, tackle, and really doing a great job and defensive end. He's he's doing both of them in there. Um, I think that's about it. It's one of those sort of standard things. They always say defense starts faster than offense. It's kind of a cliche, but do you think it's especially the case this year because you have so many guys back experience wise on defense as opposed to offense? Yeah, yeah, I think for sure. Uh, defensively, you know, the front seven is. It's pretty mature. I mean, there's no new guys in there. I mean, Jalen Twyman's playing really well for one of the newer, newer guys in there. But uh, there's a lot of experience on defense. Um, but they are still dealing with new stuff that we're doing. Uh, it's different, you know, that we, than we've done in the past. Um, but offensively, again, just we're trying to replace some linemen up front. And, and again, it's always, I think, you know, harder offensively to because you're trying to install slowly enough to, you know, for your kids to pick up what you're doing. What's the status of Chris Clark? Chris has stepped away right now, really for personal reasons, you know, um, and talking with his mom and dad just, you know, personally, there's some things he's trying to deal with, um, you know, that uh, that he needs to step away right now. So he's, he's away from the program, um, and, uh, you know, our best wishes are for Chris and his family to uh, to, to make it through these these tough times. So would you say that door's still open for him to return, I guess, at some point? If... You know what, uh, I never, you know, that's something we haven't really discussed. Right now, he his... His, uh, his well-being is the most important thing. That leaves you with three second-year guys, two redshirt freshmen mm -hmm. at, at tight end. What have those three shown you this spring? What do you expect out of them? You know what, uh, up and down, really. Um, you know, I think as the offense is being installed, those are three very talented guys. I mean, uh, you know, Sear, you know, Charles Reeves, and, and Grant Kerrigan. I mean, three very talented guys that are going to all play for us next year, period. I mean, it's not like you're saying, hey, these two are really good, and this one not quite ready. All three of them do things. I would probably say Kerrigan's probably the best blocker at this point and can still run at 290, just like Charles uh, can run at 290. But they're all doing different things that you kind of go, wow. I mean, so we'll have an assortment of guys to be able to put in the game. Those guys are both 290? Oh, I think so. Yeah. You can put them on a the scale. They're between 285 and 290 and can run. Is that your scale out tomorrow? Okay. <laughs> Is that a position now where maybe you, you look in the offseason to see if there's sort of any guys – available who are older and, and have more experience like you guys did with Matt last year? Yeah, not really, unless there's something pops pops out there. Um, I, we feel good with the three guys we have. Uh, first of all, and then we've got you know a young group of defensive ends that have all been told, hey, you know, they're sure. big athletes that could move over and, and play tight end as a, as a young guy. So, you know, we're prepared for that as well, and we'll find out when they come into camp, you know, who can do what. How have the quarterbacks been through two weeks of scrimmage, you know? They've been really good. You know, I'm happy with where Kenny is right now. Um, first of all, I'm happy that they're staying healthy. Where the defense is staying away from them. Um, but Ricky's doing a nice job as well. They're both, you know, probably where we, we want them to be right now.